It got to a point where Aaron and I both just decided that it seems like alcohol might just be a waste of time. So this is what happened when we stopped drinking. Definitely an improvement in sleep. For me, I would say improve my relationship with food. Actually coming out of my shell. Performance, like athletic ability, performance in bed. No more brain fog. So to put it very bluntly, I have not had a drink of alcohol since finding out. Hey you guys, Erin and Dusty here. Welcome back to Eat, Move, Rest. Yes. So the best way to break a bad habit is to replace it with a good one. This week we are going to be talking all about drinking, addiction, bad habits, regrets that we both have from bad decisions that we've made. And we're specifically talking about, for us, drinking and why it might help for you to stop or drink less. We think there's a lot of helpful info in here for you guys and be sure to share it with friends and family who might also benefit. So January is like the kickstart month, right? For everybody to like kickstart their health and their wellness journey. Last week we were promoting a ton of recipe books and like so much good feedback. Even my mom was stoked about it. This is the vegan health and fitness bundle. Yep. 75 plus eBooks for only $50. They are completely new books. <laughs> and we're pumped to be a part of such a great group of influencers and inspiring health and wellness advocates. So if you're looking to improve your health, definitely jump on board. You get to own these books for a lifetime, so plenty of time to dig in. So alcoholism, addiction, recovery, it's all been very present in our close friend and family circle. In fact, yep. both of our younger brothers struggled pretty much hitting rock bottom during what would have otherwise been the most joyful time of our lives right around our wedding. Yep. So we can share a little bit about that and also our own personal stories, even though neither of us consider ourselves addicts per se. Yep. I know we've both struggled with tendencies towards not just alcoholism, but binging and restricting, especially for me with food, if you've watched my vegan transformation story. I was recently listening, like I'm always listening to audiobooks, and my favorite books recently are by Russell Brand. So if you guys don't know Russell Brand, he's a comedian, movie star, and recovering addict. So <laughs> everything from drugs, alcohol, sex, like you name it, he's like been down in the dumps of it. And his books are just amazing. And the more I listen to him, the more I reflect on my own life. And, and Aaron and I together have kind of been reflecting back to our 20s and how we were borderline, you know, addicted to a lot of the things that we were doing in a very dangerous way. And I, I, a lot of times I look at myself now and I think those tendencies are still very much there. You know, we're never free from mm -hmm. these, uh, this clutch, uh, these clutches of addiction or temptation or any of these things. And I so, think it holds true for so many things, even anxiety and stress yeah. and depression, which we've both dealt with in very real ways, it, totally. it doesn't ever just completely go away, you know? It's always lingering back there and you have to really be on your toes every day taking the utmost care of yourself to keep it at bay. Yeah. So same holds true for what we're talking about today. So we yeah. thought it'd be fun to, well, not fun, but <laughs> helpful to discuss our personal experience, not as professionals, but just as your peers. Yeah. And also to talk about how we have overcome thus far and also sharing, you know, the extreme addiction stories in our lives and how they've managed to overcome. So definitely leave us some comments below. We know that Devin, Dusty's little brother, and my brother Ben would both love to hear from you guys as well. So totally. let's, let's keep the conversation rolling. So my brother is about four and a half years younger than me. Um, and I think what, tr what triggered his um, somewhat downward spiral into alcoholism in his case was probably my parents, our parents divorce. So for whatever reason, my dad, who I would also call a functional alcoholic, I would say, um, basically left. He left us, left my mom and started a new family and legitimately um, have seen him very little ever since. So that was almost 14 years ago. Um, now actually maybe a little bit longer, which seems crazy. And so that was a super unfortunate event for us. You know, we were both in our teens and my mom, of course, um, was devastated. And I think that's what maybe started um, the, the cycle of addiction and, and alcohol abuse for my little brother. 
I will say that I was not innocent myself. You know, being a freshman and sophomore and junior and college i was a total wreck you know my my wanting to have fun and go party was now coupled with this like deep you know anger towards my father and sadness um, for my mother and fear for myself and my own life and i drank a lot a lot a lot and did other drugs as i started to like come out of that phase and get together with aaron my little brother started to it really bad and nobody really knew it until um, I couldn't find him one day. I was calling and my mom was calling and nobody could find Devin and so of course your mind starts racing. I was, I remember where I was. I was at the hardware store <laughs> getting some stuff for a project and I, I talked to my other buddy who had um, been through a lot um, in, the, in the way of alcoholism and he said you better call detox. I bet that's where he is. So that's what I did and that's where Devin was. After a couple of trips to detox, um, the second one being right up close to Aaron and my wedding for my little brother, we realized things had gotten really bad. So we got another phone call late at night from Devin, my brother, who had said, hey, does somebody stole my car, somebody crashed my car, and I don't know why, I, but I believed him. And you know, the, the officer I spoke to said, you're being manipulated by your brother who's basically a drunk and just crashed his own car, which of course the policeman was right. Long story short, my little brother is possibly going to be spending our wedding day, he's my best man, in jail and Aaron's brother is not far off. It kind of started out the same for my brother and I. We are only 14 months apart, so super close growing up. Um, we butted heads a lot in high school and started to kind of combine forces and get along in college. <laughs> we lived in the same apartment, one floor apart, hung out with very similar friends, but we also had very separate lives as well. So there would be times where I would peer down and see him hanging out with his friends and you know just kind of being the big sister and eventually I actually witnessed him doing some things that I wasn't quite sure what they were but I knew they were highly illegal. Being that he was maintaining good grades and playing division one football um, for the university it really didn't seem like a fit for him to have a serious addiction problem. I began to see marks on his arms, all of the telltale signs. He just, you know, kind of diminished a little bit as far as he had always been a big, beefy, bulky guy um, who was very into his health and fitness. So to see all of that fall away um, was very, very saddening and disheartening. And I was honestly to the point where I was just waiting every day for the call. And like Dusty said, we were at a time in our lives that was very exciting, um, being engaged and planning our wedding on our family's property. We were working day and night, super hard to get yep. everything prepared. Meanwhile, my brother is in and out of jail. There was a point where he actually met up with us for my birthday, which very much su surprised and shocked us. And he handed me a grip of cash for my birthday present, which I could only attribute to being drug money, so I said I didn't want it. The next day, we actually came to find out that he had been arrested, um, wound up in a minimum security prison for, what? Well, how many years was it? Five, five About or seven. Five to five or seven years. Um, he was um, on good behavior. He was taking courses to reverse his issues, both um, physically and mentally and emotionally. Long story short, like I said, he came out on the other side as a changed person. Um, he has been a joy to have back in our lives. His attitude is completely changed, yep. so upbeat, we get along. He has a son, Isaiah, who is Maxie's best friend. He's six <laughs> years old, so there's an age gap, but they absolutely love spending time together. Uh, we're both completely mind blown at just like, how much my brother transformed while he was in prison and now after the fact and he continues to be a blessing to our family and a major source of inspiration going back almost eight years ago now leading up to the wedding like just weeks before both of our brothers were 
needing to get sober, possibly going to be in jail. And to put another like kink in the chain, my best friend um, from high school was also struggling majorly with addiction. So I actually got a phone call from his mom one day that he was in the hospital. He had basically almost killed himself um, drinking and ended up in the hospital with kidney failure. There, he was, when I went to see him, he was jaundiced and yellow. He was thin and he looked like he was about to die. And the doctors actually said that he had like a 35% chance of living. So two months before our wedding, both of our brothers, like I said, are in a whole heap of trouble. And now my best friend is two. Fast forward seven years to just this summer, Ben, has been sober and is now out of jail and doing great. Devin, my brother, is the same, like the, the best he's ever been probably. And unfortunately, I hate to say that my best friend relapsed again this summer after seven years of sobriety. So I've um, you know, been talking to him. He's still very much back in the throes of alcoholism as we speak, which is you know difficult and sad. Um, but it's just one of those things that Aaron and I look at as like, okay, we need to talk about this. We need to bring this up. And, and even though like we haven't been through any programs like 12 step, yeah. um, one of our very close family friends and mentors yeah. actually has been sober for 30, Four so, 34, 35 years. Yeah. Um, so he became even more prominent in yeah. our lives as a mentor, but also as a support system for Ben and Devin. Oh, we have it seems like we're like just surrounded by right by people who either are or have been addicts and, and fortunately, then there's a few extended you know cousins and aunts yeah. on both of our sides of the family as well and um, even when we first got together something that stood out to me is that your mom never drinks alcohol yeah. and to me at the time like not being exposed to serious addiction that seemed very alluring to me and very intriguing but also kind of intimidating and threatening and made me uncomfortable <laughs> because I knew for myself, like, wow, I wish I could be that person. I wish I could be brave enough or figure out how to do that. Yeah. And it was just interesting. Intriguing would be the word. Yeah, my mom has never drank, which is funny because my dad, like I said, is a total function functioning alcoholic. It got to a point where Aaron and I both just decided many years ago after going vegan and, and cleaning up our health and doing everything that we have, that it seems like alcohol um, might just be a waste of time. Yeah, and it definitely didn't happen overnight. And yeah. I think there are two sides to this, just like there are with health and wellness and predispositions to certain diseases and disorders. There's yeah. genetics, and then there are lifestyle choices. Yeah. So that's why we went plant-based, because after learning like how little genetics play a role and how greatly um, life cho lifestyle choices play a role, uh, we, we just knew we had to go plant-based for our health to do everything that was within our power, you know, coming from a family with a history of heart disease, anxiety, depression, like what can we do? And the same holds true for alcoholism. I don't feel that alcohol was something that I was instantly hooked on as much as it got rid of that shyness and that fear and that insecurity and helped me to feel like I was blossoming in a sense, even though it was false. Um, I think that's what drove me into drinking was just, you know, feeling more outgoing and sociable and it made me feel like I was on top of the world in that way. Yeah. And the other reason is because I was always predisposed to almost OCD-like tendencies, just being extremely hard on myself and being very nitpicky and obsessing yeah. as I got into health and wellness, obsessing over food. Yeah. And it got to a point where I would, during the week, deprive myself and then on the weekends in order to be less shy and more relaxed I would drink and at which point the deprivation turned into binging both drinking and then eating yeah. so it was a roller coaster of deprivation yeah. and binging and I think those OCD and shyness tendencies are what caused the alcohol to be part of my solution 
Um, but really the first thing I needed to fix was why am I so hard on myself? Why am I obsessing? Take the time to just get quiet and get to know yourself, journaling things out, surrounding yourself with people of wisdom like our mentor Joel, who I wish we would have been close with when we were in our <laughs> college days. Alcohol for me feels like it is the the match that starts the forest fire. As soon as I got my dorm room in college, it was on like Donkey Kong. And it was like, okay, I'm gonna make up for all the lost time um, that I didn't get to party in high school because my mom was so super strict. And I just started drinking like crazy. And of course it was fun. And you think that you're finding yourself um, but really you're not, you're totally losing yourself. So like Aaron just said, the drinking would lead to hangovers that caused extreme anxiety, which caused depression, which then caused me to feel like I needed to drink more. And it's just this vicious, vicious cycle of just despair. It gets to a point where it's just like, you look around and everybody is really actually hurting. And it all comes back to, for me, drinking. I, f I look back and I think, could all of these things been avoided and how? And if I look at my parents' marriage and I think alcohol, eliminate that, my parents might have a perfect marriage. I look back at the, all of the mistakes that I made, you know, hooking up with too many girls and going to stupid parties and doing stupid drugs. What does it come back, back down to? Drinking. And again, same thing. It's like, wow, if we could just somehow leave this one thing out of our lives, perhaps we could avoid more mishaps in the future and not just look better, but feel better and be better. So we've basically done that. So I think three things that really helped were setting healthy boundaries, yep. accountability, and then also just plain logic. So yeah. if we were to break those down, starting with the cut and dry, simple logic, logistics yeah. of things, like I just started to reason with myself the same way I was with healthy food and eating and, and just the science and yeah. just, you know, one, two, three hours of partying and having a blast at a bar pales in comparison to the three or four days of hangover yep. and crumminess and fatigue that I was feeling after the fact. So totally. it was just like... Not to mention the money you spend right? and the money you spend on the alcohol alone and then the food that you buy when you're out mm -hmm. and it's just crazy. And, and the fact that you are in fact impairing yourself. Oh man. I'm like for being so hyper alert and liking to be in control of yeah. my health and my mind and my mood and yeah. my choices why would I impair myself and why am I feeling impaired because I'm actually poisoning my cells that makes no sense <laughs> especially on a plant-based diet <laughs> right so I think for me the the number one recommendation would be to examine the relationships in your life I'm like a relationship guy like I can't meet someone without feeling like I have to like dump into them. Looking back, you know, I hear from my buddies every once in a while after the accident, I had text messages from all of my old friends and I hate to admit it, many of them, many of those friends I haven't seen in like 10 years because they are still living the lifestyles that I had to get myself out of. You know, the drinking, the eating, the partying, the, the football games, the gambling, all of that stuff. Um, I had to completely separate myself from, I had to cut those relationships off because they just weren't healthy. And, and they that, say that you're the, you're the product of the five people you're closest to. Totally, and that was the hardest and the easiest step to make because once I cut those relationships out of my life you know yeah it meant moving home I moved home with my mom to finish college and that wasn't very exciting <laughs> um, even though I'm glad I did it but it then wasn't... you met me right <laughs> <laughs> it was the same for me it was just setting healthy boundaries saying like if I don't go out I won't see these people and I won't be tempted to do these things yep. and I've always been kind of an introvert anyways yep. so I don't <laughs> think that leaving all of my 
friends, my party friends behind really hurt me all that much because I wasn't having deep, meaningful connection and conversations with them throughout the week anyways. Right. So I became a little bit of a loner, which is something that I think drew Dusty and I into we each other. We shared that. <laughs> yeah. My mom, in hindsight, it was funny because she's like, everybody has to go through an incubation phase. Yeah. And after she said that, it gave me peace because I didn't feel so guilty for being such a loner and for going through a period of my life where I didn't have a whole big circle of friends to run around with or to hang on. Um, it was my incubation phase and now I honestly feel like since starting Eat Me Rest, starting the YouTube channel, um, having a little bit of a story of hope to share yeah. has been kind of the blooming or the coming out of the shell phase for yeah. us. No, totally. I, I agree too and I feel the same way like I said when I moved home. I all of a sudden started to feel like I was like coming back to life from the inside out. I was doing woodworking, I was painting bikes in mom's garage and you know I picked up all these hobbies that that I used to do when I was a kid and my buddies would text me and be like oh man you're such a dork like you've got so many hobbies you know meanwhile they're out you know doing the party thing and I'm at home like yeah like building a chair and like <laughs> cr crazy funny things um, but I was totally like coming back to life and it felt so good. We started connecting and forming real friendships yep. with real people who we ended up road tripping to see and visit even yep. in, on our recent California trip yeah. people who were plant-based overcoming different health struggles emotional struggles and overcoming some addiction struggles as well yeah um, also finding a lot of friends of faith so it's just weird to find people who are just like you yeah when you're not even searching it's like you're just attracting it's that like this by magnetism yeah like the more we learn the more i realize that like those energy fields are a real thing and yeah. like your vibe attracts your tribe yeah. you know we weren't searching and digging anymore in the wrong places it's like they're just coming to you <laughs> right negative energy works in the same way it's like mm -hmm. either energy is contagious right just like bad food makes you crave more bad food healthy food makes you crave more healthy food relationships are the same so as soon as i cut myself off from those negative relationships and Aaron and I got together and started working on these this this channel and our and our you know e move rest um, passion for health and wellness like Aaron just said we have connected now folks have come on our Costa Rica retreats who we've met up with on our road trips and it's just been an amazing journey of transformation that has not been easy it's always difficult it's always hard but it's proving to be so much more worth it mm -hmm. so to put it very bluntly i have not had a drink of alcohol since finding out that i was pregnant with max so yeah. that's been three years yeah. which is super exciting and empowering and i feel really good about that i remember in college thinking i don't think i could ever be pregnant because i don't think i could be sober for nine months that's yeah. Yeah. just scared me it shook Crazy. me but you know you just do it when you get pregnant you do it you don't have a choice yeah. and after giving birth I'm like well now I'm breastfeeding and I'm very committed to this yeah <laughs> so I just thought you know I've gone nine months without it I feel better for it even though I was already at a place where we were having maybe one glass of red wine a week yeah we had slowly tapered off yeah so for me I have not been a hundred percent sober I will admit to occasionally having a beer with Aaron's dad during a football game or if we're <laughs> out in the yard uh, working in the summer and, and Aaron's mom brings Mike and I a beer like I'll, I'll have a beer once in a while and and that for me is totally fine like I, I don't struggle with that and it usually is never more than one. Something that cracks me up is last pregnancy I was like an ice cold beer just sounds good and that's, <laughs> that was very weird for me at that time not drinking beer anymore. So this is what happened when we stopped drinking this is not premeditated these are just the things that are coming to mind for me, number one is definitely an improvement in sleep. Like every time I drink, I slept terrible. Now I sleep great and it's like so worth it to not drink, <laughs> not even one. For me, I would say improve my relationship with food. So 
not so much of the roller coaster of binging and depriving anymore. It's more of a steady, stable ride. Another exciting thing is actually coming out of my shell and feeling super authentic and living my life in integrity. I feel like it's uncomfortable to do it this way, but it feels so much better when I can get up in front of a group of people or yeah. be around new friends and just push myself out of my comfort zone and be excited and feel good about myself for it. Yeah, it's like real confidence. Mm -hmm. And it's like what so many people, well, we all lack, but it's like, it's the only real. way to actually improve or grow that muscle is to actually work on it. Totally. So for me, performance, like athletic ability, like performance everywhere in bed, <laughs> performance in the gym, performance on a run. Like I just feel so much better. I feel more energetic. No joke. I can lift more and do more pull-ups and push-ups than I could 10 years ago in my twenties. It seems kind of obvious, but no more hangovers. Yes. And I think the biggest thing for me is no more brain fog <laughs> and extreme anxiety. So practically speaking, how are you supposed to go out and be social then? Like, Honestly, we always make sure we have a drink in our hands if we're gonna go out to a restaurant or a bar with friends. So it's usually a club soda with lime. Yep. It's a small drink that looks like a cocktail. It's got the tiny straw in it. <laughs> Nobody will question you if you have a drink in hand. They're fun and enjoyable to totally. drink without making you feel crappy. So for me, like, if I'm going out and I need to feel like confident and fun, and I'm not gonna be drinking, I like have to have a good story. Like, I feel like an old man, but I'm like always trying to figure out like, what's a good joke? Like, how can I be funny and fun while being sober? So like people don't notice or don't feel like they have to like bug me about it. And it's a good challenge for yourself too, to help yeah. you come out of your shell, especially if you wanna feel authentic about it. Yeah. Like, how can I challenge myself to get Uncom get comfortable with being uncomfortable, you know, even as a shy person. How can right. I be the funny, fun person in the room? There's this person inside of all of us that like wants to be having fun and like is lighthearted and is fun, but like we don't have to drink to find that person. So mm -hmm. it's like a new awakening in a sense to like be a sober person and to like come fully alive. Something else I think is to go slow and steady at it, kind yeah. of like we did with going plant-based. This is assuming that you don't have a full-blown alcohol addiction. Right. If you're just, you know, feeling uncomfortable about having it in your life and you don't want it anymore, yeah. slow and steady always wins the race. Most of us, in fact, fall when we try to go cold turkey. So, yeah. you know, we just eliminated foods one by one and the same with alcohol. We went yeah. from no more heavy wheat beers, just just the lightest of light beers to finally just red wine here and there at a wedding and then in the summertime our rosé and it even got to the point where we would take our spicy fizzy water and water down our rosé. Yeah, now we're just watering it down. It's like let's just eliminate it completely. Setting those healthy boundaries can happen slowly, so slowly that you don't even realize they're happening yep. and on that same token you know you begin to attract new people into your life. It's weird when you make different life choices yep. and you become Become this better person you know the right people just tend to come into your life like I was saying earlier totally and all of a sudden you become like the sober bunch at the bar like now when we all go out to have dinner it's like we are all having the most fun and all laughing and like we're the only table that's not drinking and like it's so it's just cool the way like we've transformed our lives and our health and like brought other people in around us and attracted that same sort of like life and vitality and you know this lifestyle of just like living pure and whole and healthy and i like that i can remember the conversations <laughs> i had with people right <laughs> it makes it so much more meaningful like true relationships blossom totally and like who likes having to get a cab to back to their car the next day <laughs> or realize you drove drunk like crazy like so so bad so something that has really helped me not just in alcoholism but like in my life like all together is freeing myself from these like generational sins or this like generational sickness of like alcoholism and infidelity and divorce and like all of these things that I've seen my uncles and my own father do for instance it's like super scary and if I can just look at myself like literally look at myself in the mirror or like selfie mode say to myself like Dusty, you get to make the decisions from here on out. You get to eat and drink and do whatever it is that you want. 
and you need to hold yourself accountable for the, the wrong choices that you make. The one thing that Joel always tells us are like good choices equal good outcomes. And so I just always remind myself of that. I'm not my father, I'm not my uncle, like I'm not going to make the decisions that I'm so afraid are like ingrained in my DNA. We like have freedom from that in the choices that we make. Finally, something else that helps to not want to be driven to self-medicate is to simply hope for the best and expect the best, but be prepared for the worst. So just having like a level-headed outlook on life, knowing that hardships will come your way and life is literally like a roller coaster, yeah. but it becomes even more of a roller coaster when you provide your own problems in your life, AKA alcohol and trying yeah. to self-soothe in that way. So, you know, death, divorce, job loss, breakups, all of these things are going to be a part of all of our lives if we can just be prepared yeah. and learn these effective coping mechanisms yeah. whether it be 12 step or there's a great book that um, we've learned about at a retreat called radical forgiveness another one called radical self-forgiveness yeah. i would definitely look into all of these I've even considered reading the 12 step book. Oh, me um, too. Highly recommend anything from Russell Brand. He's hilarious, he's ridiculously smart, and he's well so as helpful. Rich Roll, who is yeah. our favorite plant based podcaster, who is yep. also in recovery, huge 12 step fan. It seems like there's like this group of sober people now that have like this amazing outlook on life. And sometimes I feel like, Man, I almost wish that I had like a cooler story like that. You don't need a tragedy or like some crazy addiction to have this transformation, to have this awakening. People honestly like Rich Roll talk about how they've transferred their addictions so now he's an ultra athlete. <laughs> right. But it's like, you know, that's an addiction that's not easy to say yes to. It's not easy to get up and put on the running shoes before the sun's out yeah. and go for that long 10, 20 mile run, you yeah. know? like. That's an addiction that's going to better you and improve you and give you something to work towards. Right. So if you've got to transfer it, transfer it in the positive. <laughs> totally. And again, both of our brothers have done that successfully. And again, we could have them on the channel if you guys would like to hear from each of our brothers. Unfortunately, I have a friend who is back in the throes of alcoholism. So pray for him and put your <laughs> Put your hopes in, in a better future for not just him, but for everybody else who's struggling. And if you are someone who's struggling, feel free to reach out to us. We have tons of resources and be happy to help. And always reach out to those that are close to you, your friends, your family, etc. If you think you might even have a problem, like I would definitely just talk to someone about it. Mm -hmm. Remember the serenity prayer. Yep. I'm not gonna recite it. <laughs> Look it up for yourself. Yes. Praise God, keep the faith, keep the hope. Yep. Ultimately, that's what's going to get you there totally. sooner than anything else. Yep. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll be back next week with more. <laughs> health and wellness goodness. Last but not least, we are in a, another ebook bundle. These come out every January to like help kickstart everybody's New Year's resolutions. Heavy on the health, recipe, nutrition, also a lot of fitness. Yep. There's a lot of courses in this one. Again, it's only $50 for 75 plus yep. ebooks and other content. We'll link that and everything else we mentioned below. Eat, move, rest, your best. We'll be back next week. <laughs> Bye guys. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.